Now, let's talk about the story that's making us smile this morning. Emma Raducanu is the first British woman to appear at the US Open semifinals since 1983. She is now through to the final of the US Open. You say that over and over again. Emma Raducanu. The Raducani. final of the US Open. Yeah, it's just too fantastic. The last person to do that... This is why it's so fantastic, right? The last person to do that was former world number five, Joe Jury, who joins us now from London. And with us on the sofa is Naomi Brody. Naomi Brody, who was commentating on this morning's match, hasn't been to bed yet. <laughs> I've not made it to sleep And yet. you were, you have been officially told that you can go crazy. You can be excited now. Yeah. As excited as you want to be. Yeah, I've officially told that to myself. And I'm kind of telling it to everyone else as well. We keep being told we're being British and getting ahead of ourselves. But um, she's officially a history maker now. The first qualifier ever to make it all the way through to the final of a Grand Slam, any Grand Slam. So um, I think we're officially allowed to be excited. Can you give us a bit of insight into uh, uh, what Emma's like? Because now you've known her quite well for, what, two years or so now, during what has been quite an odd time for all sports people. Yeah. So what's been happening for her in this time? And how is it that, boom, she's just arrived the way she has? Well, interestingly, she actually hasn't played much recently because she didn't travel during the pandemic. That was, I think, her family's decision. They didn't want her travelling... Um, during COVID times, totally understandably. Yeah. So she's been just training. She's also been doing her A-levels. Um, she put her rackets down during that time, which I think is fantastic. It's so easy to get so carried away, isn't it? An A and an A star, isn't she? Yeah. Brilliant. She's just one of those people who's great at everything. Um, very intelligent. And yet we still like her. Yeah, <laughs> annoyingly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and she's passed a driving test as well. So she's been very, very busy, um, but not playing tennis. And now she's back on tour and doing fantastically. Joe Jury, um, great to have you with us on Breakfast this morning. Just tell me, I mean, for, I'm assuming you watched it, and just tell me, what do you think? What do you think of Emma Raducanu? Uh, well, I'm excited as well, as long uh, as everybody else is. And for me, it's just the way she's gone about it, her poise on the court. She's not really got that nervous. She's just being herself. I love that smile. She seems to be enjoying herself. And, you know, she's got the whole package of being a good player. She's got strokes that are very repeatable. She's got a great mindset. She's good under pressure. And, you know, what's not, li not to like, really? I think this could be the start of an amazing career. Uh, Joe, lovely to see you this morning. It's Charlie here. So many things can go wrong in tennis, can't they? It's, you know, there's, you, it's just you out there and your nerves, your shot play. There's so many things. And we all hear really top players saying that, don't we? We hear real champions, proven champions, saying something wasn't right, my head wasn't there. It's as if all of that does not apply. Yeah, I think, you know, at the moment, isn't it amazing to watch Emma, just the way she's handling everything? I think she's got a very good team around her because from now on, and, and I suppose it's already started with the social media and the press and all of us who are, are really excited about it, she's going to have to have good people around her to, to protect her, really, from everything that's going to go on in the next few years. But... It just seems that she's in the moment. She's really enjoying herself. She's having the time of her life. She's worked really hard to get to this point of her career. And, I mean, how exciting is it? <laughs> <laughs> it is so exciting. It really is. Listen, Naomi, what, what physically... We, we've spoken about her, uh, um, her mental strength and her, the way she, she can in, in, embody good strategy and all of that. But what physically makes her so brilliant on the course because I think it was Martina Navratilova just said it's like she's been here before wise head you know it's like it's almost like she's lived this life before yeah she moves so incredibly well I think she somehow improved leaps and bounds even since Wimbledon she after Wimbledon went out to the state she's been there for weeks now I mean she's been in New York for three weeks <laughs> just in the one tournament but she's been in the states for weeks before that as well playing more tournaments and I think just gaining that level of intensity, getting used to the top level of the other players, the pace in which they play at. Um, but as you say, she moves so incredibly well. She just keeps that really wide base while she's on court, so she still gets 
you know, she gets so many balls back, but she's in great balance when she gets there. Um, and it just puts so much pressure on her opponent. One, one, of, one of the people in the commenta uh, commentating team was saying that her opponent today just couldn't figure out how she was going to serve. You know, like, if anyone's watched Wimbledon, you know that you all have little tweaks and you kind of know, right, they're going to serve this way. Like, they can't figure it out with her. I mean, what, what, what is she learning? I have no idea. I don't... Uh, the serve as well, as you say, any aspect of a game, that you, if you compare it to a year ago, even to just a few months ago, she suddenly improved so much. Um, the statistics on her returns are incredible. She stands so close in and puts so much pressure on her opponent's second serves and it kind of has like a knock-on effect then for the rest of the game. They end up hitting more double faults, but they end up just crumbling. That You can see as the match goes on, they just do not know what to do to beat her. Joe, can you pick up on this theme? I I've heard a few of your colleagues, former professionals and professionals, saying there's something a bit discombobulating for an opponent when the player you're playing against seems happy, seems kind of positive. And that in itself, almost regardless of the point play, just their, their bearing and what they look like and why they're smiling can almost sort of put you off your stride. Just can you explain that a bit for us? I mean, when you're on court down there in that arena and you can feel the vibes coming from your opponent, you really can. You can feel tension or you can feel if they're upset. And, and also it's the same for you, how you project yourself. And a lot of the time it's a bit of an act because, you know, you're pretty nervous and you're feeling the situation. But it doesn't seem like it's an act with Emma. It just seems like she's totally natural in what she's doing. She's just enjoying herself. She's playing her tennis. She's taking it to her opponent. And I absolutely love her blend of defending and then attacking because she, as Naomi was saying, she gets up the court on those returns. She's well inside the court. She's taking it very early, but it's not, you know, the shock of it. It's just, it happens time and time again. And she's used to doing it. She's making it happen. And uh, do you want to just pick up on that thing? And that, if, if I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong here, the final shot was a drive volley. Am yeah. I right? Good Which knowledge. is in tennis. OK, so in tennis... <laughs> what is that? And people, well, pe people are coming... Well, maybe you should explain, but my, my take on that is it's a, it's a very, very kind of confident shot, isn't it? It means... And you're running at the net, right. and instead of just slicing it or something or being cautious, you're full on. And, you get, and that is... It's a very bold thing, and it kind of embodies how she plays. Would yeah. that be right? Yeah, absolutely. So a drive volley is when, um, instead of hitting a regular volley, you kind of hit a, a normal forehand, but taking the ball out the air before it's bounced. So as you say, you're, you're charging towards the net, you can see the ball's coming up quite high, and she's chosen to hit it before it's bounced. And so that was for match point? That was for the match point. Which is, which is, you don't take risks when you're going for match point, do Whatever you? Whatever Raducanu does. Um, and she's, we just keep using the word fearless throughout the whole tournament because regardless of the score, she's playing this exactly the same, whether she's up or down, whether it should be a high-pressure point, she goes for her shots exactly the same. Joe, would you agree? I can see you nodding there when we're talking just about her, her Emma just being fearless. I mean, would, would, yeah. would that be your closing kind of strategy for match point? Yeah, I think she doesn't hesitate, does she? And I think she is fearless. It's a great word to describe her. She knows what she wants to do and she does it. So, you know, perfect. I thought she might struggle in that last game uh, earlier on this morning, but she didn't at all. Jojo, I'm going to give you the last word. You, amongst all of us, <laughs> us particularly, you're, you're the one who knows most about what it feels on those big occasions. Give us a thought about the final. It's nine o'clock UK time in the evening. Give us a thought about it. I think, you know, she just has to be herself. I think the pressure's slightly changed in that she's playing someone who's her own age in the same situation. Uh, and she can say she's got nothing to lose, but, you know, it's a Grand Slam final. But if she can stay in the moment and enjoy it whilst she's doing it, because she's got the tennis to win this. We all embrace that thought. Lovely to see you, Joe. Thank Great. you very much. And uh, Naomi, you get to get some sleep now, finally. <laughs> finally. It was worth staying up for, wasn't it? We got to see you a bit of history. You won't get to sleep. You, you're going to have that excited thing going on. You know, <laughs> you just can't it. sleep. You are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> enjoy it. Sleep later. Thank you both so Thank much. You. Thank you.